Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about more luxury lipsticks. I have a whole luxury lipstick playlist. I will link that playlist for you in the description box down below. And since I'm right in the middle of a countdown from worst to first of all of my satin and cream formulas, um, I'll leave the first part of that video, it's like a three part series, <laughs> in the description box as well. But it's also in that playlist if you just wanted to watch everything. If you're wondering what the criteria is to me a luxury lipstick is anything that costs $35 or more and I feel like since I don't know if we should be changing it because I came up with this criteria back in like the end of 2023 when I started this luxury series and then I was like you know what yeah that's a good point and then everybody started raising their prices and I was like is it still good? But we're going to stick with $35 as the price point. The rest of the criteria is going to include what it smells like, if it's scented, what the packaging is like, how many shades are in the range, what does it feel like when it's on, and how long does it wear. And then there's another place at the bottom I have like extra notes for like bonus thoughts that don't kind of fit into that, you know, previous like metric. A couple things to keep in mind. First of all, these are all based on my personal preference where I'm looking for something that's creamy. I want something that doesn't kind of fit outside of my lip lines. I want something that's going to be hydrating and feel good on the lips and not dry them out. And then on top of that, I want something that's going to be consistent. Okay. And beyond that, um, this is like that middle section. There are 24 luxury lipsticks that I own. The first eight that I did in the previous video that's in the description box are the ones where um, the ones at the very bottom are like the, oh, don't buy this lipstick and here's why. And then at a certain point, they're just good lipsticks. And then it's small little nuances that kind of move them up the line. I like this one more than the last one. Um, and that's kind of where we are because I would say all of the lipsticks from here on out um, and several from like the last video are definitely worth your time and money, but it depends on what your preferences are. All right, so keep that in mind. So coming in at number 16 is a lipstick from House of Siage. I have a couple of these. I have a couple of bow holders. These are so beautiful because they're um, really heavy. They're really weighty. Talk about like a luxe packaging. This lipstick, come on, how bougie is this? It has Swarovski crystals. It has um, enameling on there. It is just beautiful. It also comes in this little leather box here that has like a mirror in it. Um, it also has like a little bag that goes over it. But here's what you want to keep in mind. The refill for the lipstick alone is $35. <laughs> and the case can run you anywhere between $198 and $329. Now here's where I tell you, I didn't spend $200 for this case. I bought it um, secondhand. So I think I spent like 70, 80 bucks for it. Um, another one, I have another one, and that one I got on sale from House of Siage. It's the same design, but it's kind of like this tomatoey red. And because they're refillable, you can put their matte formulas, their satin formulas, their lip balms in here. The other thing that I like about this packaging is these bow holders come, some of them come with silver detailing and some of them come with gold detailing. So if you get one of the gold ones, this part here, you can buy the same lipstick in a gold tube so that it matches your component. I mean, that to me is like that extra layer of thoughtfulness. The same color will come either in a gold tube or a silver tube, depending on the bow holder you have. So when you open it up, it never looks weird or out of place. That's fantastic. This is the shade Queen. I do have another one of these diamond powder satin finish formulas. I love this shade. Here's what I like about this lipstick. First of all, it feels really good on. It feels really good on. It has a really light, very, very faint, sweet vanilla smell to it. I think it's a nice touch without being too overpowering. I like that it's not a floral scent because House of Siage is basically a fragrance company that does some other things like lipsticks, but they're really known for their fragrances. And I am so grateful. This is not like a powdery floral or some, you know, see what I'm saying? Like some of the other higher end luxury brands that smell kind of like, whoo, what is that? This has got a really nice, light, sweet smell. Now, the reason it is where it is here in the pack, uh, like it, right in the middle, is because, I mean, come on, she's not for everybody. Not everybody is going to go out and spend, if I were to buy, have bought this at full price, this would be close to $140 
for one tube of lipstick and one bow holder. Now, I didn't pay that because I got the lipsticks on sale and I got the bow holder secondhand, but you gotta keep that in mind. There is a way to pay a lot less for this, but even if you're paying less, you're still paying a lot. It's an experience. I wanna make sure you know that's why it is where it is. Now, if you wanna just get the lipsticks, sometimes they're on sale for like $12.50. I think the lipsticks are great. They come in this little silver tube, but what's difficult about this is that you cannot turn it up from here. This is not a functional tube. This just holds your lipstick. So you'd have to take it out and twist it up here and twist it down. And could you do that? Certainly. Does it have that luxury experience? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so I, I think this is probably the most beautiful lipstick that I own, but because it is kind of like delicate and beautiful and I don't want it to get chipped or scratched, I always keep it in here. When I use this lipstick, I put it in my purse. And the truth is to open this and then to open this or to switch things out so that I can, I don't do it as often as I should. I don't, I don't. I have so many lipsticks, I usually opt for something that is less labor intensive. Okay, a couple other things to know about this lipstick. There are 27 shades in the range. Of course, the packaging is exquisite. I love that it comes with like a, a little um, baggie that goes inside of this here. So the idea is you put the bow in here, this goes in here, or you could take the bow in just this. I feel like this is not enough protection, but it does have a nice little drawstring on it. So the packaging is Phenomenal. Beyond that, it's very creamy, it's very hydrating, but it doesn't really feel heavy on the lips. It's really lightweight. It's almost as if you can't really tell that you're wearing it, but I only have two reds in this satin formula. And what I found is that they are what I call a high maintenance red, which is that they, they kind of have a tendency a little bit to when they get someplace outside of your lip, like if you get your hair in there, it's windy and your hair gets in there and you pull it out and you get a little trail, you don't want that pigment anywhere other than where it is. Um, because I also do have fine lines around the edge of my mouth, this is one of those lipsticks I dare not wear without a lip liner. Um, the older I get, I'm 49, I always need a lip liner, but there are some that I'm just kind of, I cheat and I'm like, oh, who cares? You know, if it slips out a little bit, not the end of the world. And this is one of those that I'm like, I need lip liner. I need to make sure I'm willing to open up and carry it like this. I, there's just a lot that goes along with it. Is it a beautiful lipstick? Yes. Is it super comfortable and nourishing on the lips? Yeah. Does it dry them out? Not even a little bit. The reason that I only have reds in this formula is because although there are 27 shades, I don't like a lot of the shades. I find that there's a lot of kind of white-based corals, white-based pinks, and it reminds me of those really vibrant um, kind of milky, peachy, or pink lipsticks from the 80s that I never liked and don't look good on me. I don't like that. I don't think it looks good on me. Beyond that, I feel like the nudes, although there are some really pretty nudes, I feel like I have those shades. And because I realize now that I'm not really reaching for the component because, you know, I'm being precious with it, that for me to go and buy more lipsticks in this formula, although the formula is really nice, I would more likely buy the matte formula than the satin formula. But if you already have one of these and you know you use it and you change things out and it's not onerous for you to, you know, keep it in its packaging or you just throw it in your purse, you know, that's, we're in a different place, you and I. But I think the formula is so nice. I like the way that it feels. But because I only have two reds, they do kind of fall into that high maintenance red where I kind of have to watch them, I kind of have to babysit them, must needs put on a lip liner with them. And for the price and the experience, although it is the bougiest lipstick I own, it's the one I don't reach for nearly as much. All right, the next lipstick coming in at number 15 is this one right here. This is the Guerlain Rouge G Satin Lipstick. These lipsticks are so lovely. All right, so price-wise, you're paying $36 for the refill, which is this, and then $26 to $38 for this reusable, like, cap. Um, and they'll all come with different things. I have one that's a little bit more expensive that has, you know, the Swarovski crystals on it, um, but they come with uh, leather, with enamel, with like all sorts of stuff. They come 
Everyone is a little bit different and um, the nice thing is they're reusable so you can just get one of these and slip it in here. Here's the Guerlain Rouge G on. It's so pretty. I like that it's kind of like that slightly corally pink shade. It's not too heavy. I do have a bolder red in this formula as well. Um, the cases are so, they're so pretty. Um, the other one that I have, look, you know how sparkly and delicious are these? These are just like really luxe feeling, so weighty, so heavy. And I like the fact that, you know, spending $36 here, I can use it with this. And that it has two mirrors. One of the mirrors is a magnifying mirror and the other one is just a regular mirror. That's great. Here's what's funny. I did not know. I was looking on here going, where are they putting the name? Where are they putting the name? Because before when everything was just in plain packaging and the whole thing. It was all silver and it just came like this. I used to have one of those. It, here on the back it said, well here, it does say Guerlain and then it said Rouge G and it gave the number of the lipstick, like large, like this and easily readable. And I was like, where, where is this one? I'll have to insert a photo for you here. You're gonna have to have like your six or eight year old look it up for you or your neighbor's kid or something. Because honestly, my 49 year old eyes was sure that there was nothing on here. My husband took a photo and then we had to like enlarge it to see what the number was. So it's there, but it's microscopic. Anyway, I think that's kind of funny. Here's what's interesting. I feel like Guerlain might be doing what a lot of other brands are doing right now, which is maybe reformulating their, their lipsticks because a, a lot of people are doing that or they're discontinuing something. I hope that's not happening with this because I just picked up two of these satin lipsticks. There's only nine shades on the Guerlain website. If the brand website only has nine shades in the satin formula, that's kind of surprising to me because if you look at the promo photos for the satin lipsticks, there should be 22. So something's up. I don't know if they're trying to sell old stock, but whatever reformulation they come out with better fit this same component because I paid a pretty penny for each of these. I do like the way this wears. I get about four hours of wear out of it. It does, it does like right now you can see it's a little bit shiny. By four hours, I have some color on, but it's not shiny like this. But the one thing that I like is that it's creamy. It's hydrating. It feels good on the lips. If you're not opposed to that slightly powdery floral smell, I think the wear of this is so pretty and the shine is nice. And it's not too glossy and shellac like a full on like uber goopy lip gloss but it does have enough shine to it to make my lips look better than they are. And I think that a little bit of shine goes a long way in making my older, you know, lips that are losing collagen and volume look just a little bit healthier. Something else that was interesting to me is that even within their 22 shades that they originally launched with, all the shades were either really bold, like hot pinks or reds, or they would be kind of like soft peaches or nudes. They didn't, I mean, and that sounds like a good range of things, but there were a lot of very typical expected lipstick shades. There weren't like taupes, there weren't like browns, there weren't um, any like uh, fun shades like blue or green, which kind of makes sense for this brand and this line of lipstick from this brand, but there aren't terribly nuanced shades. And they're very much shades that I'm used to seeing for the brands that are kind of marketed towards mature women who have money to spend. Does that make sense? I don't want to call them old lady lipsticks because I don't see myself as an old lady, but they're definitely not adventurous colors and they're more typical of the lipsticks that I've seen, like the shades that I've seen over the last like 30 plus years. Coming in at number 14 is this little beauty right here. This is the Hourglass Confession Slim Lipstick. This is one of my favorite highly pigmented cream lipsticks. These have been out for a while. Again, I wonder if Hourglass is going into their more unlocked lipsticks, the satin and the mattes, and this is getting phased out because they used to have, what, 19 colors, but so many of them are listed as sold out, like seven are sold out and like you can't buy them. But another one of those where it's a refillable component, but look how itty bitty this is. This is so teensy tiny. You're paying so much for a minuscule amount of lipstick. The good thing is these are super pigmented. So the refill is $24. The entire component, if you were to buy the lipstick as well as the um, component itself are 39. And this one here is the shade my icon is. I mean, just look at that extreme pigment. I love that pigment. This is a beautiful lipstick. 
I like the fact that it's got that really tiny slimline applicator, especially for a bright red like this. I remember this shade, it was just called Icon. They used to have it in their liquid lipstick. I don't know if they still, do they still make that formula? Um, but they also used to have it in their, uh, was it their Femme lipstick? It was, <laughs> it was their old lipstick that came in like a regular tube, kind of like this. And um, then when they kind of discontinued those and launched these guys, I'm glad they kept the shade Icon because this is one of my favorite reds of all time. I love it so much. It kind of reminds me of kind of like a Snow White lip. I love it, love it, love it. All right, so there's a bar barely, barely noticeable sweet scent here. I really don't feel like it's really scented at all. And I don't know whether in my mind I'm thinking that it's slightly sweet because they're really known for not adding scents to anything. <laughs> But to me, there is like a, a hint of sweetness to this. Um, I do like this um, component. Sometimes they come in limited edition packaging. You know, like here was one from a couple years ago. They had one that came in clear packaging with their Ghost collection. I do like these. And of course, you can put a refill from this into this or to any of the other ones. This on the lips feels definitely heavier than the last two lipsticks I was talking about. This has a little bit more weight to it. But what I like about this is because it is so crazy pigmented and it's a little bit heavier, it's not as emollient. I don't feel like I am have to worry and babysit this one. Um, because it is such a bright punchy red, like five years ago, I could wear this no problem without a lip liner. And now my lips continue to lose volume, like I've mentioned before, less collagen. So I do pair almost every single red that I wear these days with a lip liner. I do with this one, but I kind of don't feel like I have to. And sometimes I'm lazy and I don't, but I really, really love this. It lasts for more than five hours. I'd say at least five and a half hours. It wears really well through beverages, through um, light snacking. You can eat a meal with it. If you're eating, you know, like a sandwich, <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking like a, a big juicy burger. My lip's gonna like fold down and I'm gonna get like a red lip print down here. I don't know if that happens to you, it does happen to me. If I'm eating a salad with a vinaigrette, it's gonna break down the color. Anything greasy is gonna do that. But I feel like this lipstick, even though it is just a touch heavier in formula, it wears really well. What I do like about it is it doesn't dry my lips out not even a little bit. I like that it is nourishing. I like that it is just a little bit weightier. I really hope that Hourglass does not discontinue this. I know that a lot of times brands want to launch something new to catch attention. I get that, but this is such a great formula. I hope they don't get rid of it. Number 13 is from Miss Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Kissing Satin Shine Lipstick. Now the one that I have here is in the shade JK Magic and it's from her Hot Lips 2 collection, but this formula is one of my all-time favorites. It's so good. The Kissing formula comes in um, this refillable packaging. There's only a couple that are in the Kissing formula in this. A lot of times they'll come in the standard rose gold packaging from Charlotte Tilbury. If they're in the rose gold, they're 35. If they're in the refillable, they're 38 because the refills, um, you can buy the refills on their own for 26. I do like that Charlotte's lipsticks have that light kind of a vanilla sweet smell. Um, it's a little bit more noticeable than the one from House of Siage, but it's not too heavy, it's not too much. Like I can smell it when I'm putting it on, but right now I'm not smelling it, even though it's like right underneath my nose. I do really like the packaging for these, even in the traditional like packaging, they're not magnetic. They do have a nice snap closure, both of them. I do like that she's making refillable packaging. I think that's great. There are 16 shades of the Kiss Satin Shine lipsticks, and I feel like these are really moisturizing on the lips. So moisturizing, they feel so good. I feel like Charlotte has really perfected um, like a range of nudes. And maybe that's because my fair skin, like most shades that I buy from Charlotte, if I buy a nude, I feel like I can wear almost any shade she makes. There are some that it tend to be a little more on the peach side that I don't love. But even though this one's a little bit more peach, I really like it. I, I reach for this one a lot. It wears for about four, maybe four and a half hours. It applies easily over the top of itself. It lasts through beverages. It lasts through light snacking. After a meal, like I might have a little bit on the edge and I'm gonna have to reapply. But what I like about this is that it feels creamy. Um, it, it is kind of like, like the Hourglass one where it has a little bit more heft to it. It's not quite as lightweight on the lips as some other formulas, but it hangs in tight, it wears well. And what I like about this formula is that unless I'm eating like a full on meal, 
I don't get like an empty spot right in the middle. It kind of wears off evenly all over. Super easy to reapply over itself and I just, I just like the way it feels. I think it's a great lipstick. Coming in at number 12 is this one here from Gucci. This is the long lasting satin lipstick. These guys are $47. Now this, this smells very floral, very heavily floral. If you do not like a scented lipstick, I would not recommend any of the Gucci lipsticks. They all, the matte, this one, the Karen Glow, like they all, they all have a scent to them. The packaging here, this one's really nice because it has the snap closure. I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have magnetic closure. She's not refillable, but I love the vintage vibes I'm getting from this, especially with the etching on the outside of this bullet. And all of the satin ones come with this etching on the outside. And if you were to pick up one of the matte ones, you'll know it's matte because the packaging is different. It has all of these like vertical lines. So you can tell even though they're both gold bullets, which is the matte and which is the satin based on the exterior of the packaging. And they both do have like the Gucci name on the top. I think it's a really, really lovely package, despite the fact that it's not refillable and it's not magnetic, but it does really have vintage lipstick vibes and I love that. All right, so there are 15 shades in this lineup. This might be one of my favorites. This is called Odalie Red. I love this one so much. Uh, it's number 500. Mm, she's so pretty. It's a warm tomatoy red. It's very comfortable. It actually feels really lightweight on the lips. It feels like there's almost nothing there. But I can still smell that Gucci lipstick smell. Um, it doesn't bother me. I am not opposed to scented lipsticks, but I know some people are, and like a heavy floral scent is a no-go for some people. So I want to make sure I mention that. I feel like it it almost wears like a lip balm. In the summer, I love reaching for this and I kind of wear this without a lip liner. I feel like I'm kind of, maybe that'll change this summer. Last summer I was still doing it and I was feeling like, well, it's doing pretty good and I'll just kind of like clean up the edge. But it feels comfortable and I kind of treat it like a lip balm. And I think that's kind of funny. That's why it is where it is in the pack because I like this formula. The one problem I have with this, although there are 15 shades, I feel like the promo photos are not terribly accurate. <laughs> I have several different lipsticks from the Gucci line and um, I wanted to try like one of each. And the thing that's really interesting to me is that I think I'm getting one shade and it like a completely different lipstick shows up with the same name and I'm like, wait, what? Is, are we sure? And I think a lot of it is the promo photos have been so severely altered for color. Um, I, I don't know. So I am a little hesitant to go out and buy more Gucci lipsticks because my local Sephora, although Sephora carries Gucci, my local Sephora doesn't carry it in store and there's no way for me to get an accurate look at what the color is like. Now Gucci does have like some interesting colors. They, I don't know if they still do, but they had a green at one point, like a deep forest green. And I don't know if that was in the, it might've been in the matte, but they have more taupes. They have more oranges. They have more browns. They have more kind of modern nuanced colors. And I think that's really, really good. But for me, because I can't go in and find exactly the shade that I want, I'm a little hesitant to buy more Gucci lipsticks. Um, but I really do like this formula. And if there's a shade that you know, hey, I always wear a red, uh, this orange red here in Odalie Red, they have another one, I forget what it's called. Is it red chiffon? Anyway, there's a red that's kind of a cool red. I was kind of like, do I need that one? But you see with how many red lipsticks, I don't need another one. But this is a beautiful formula and I really, really, really do like this kind of engraved packaging. Stunning. Number 11 is from Dior. It is their Rouge Attic Shine Lipsticks. These are $46 when you're buying them, you know, with the case, because they do have, like Guerlain does, they do have like special reusable cases, and you can buy just the refill like this for $37. But if you're getting the entire lipstick together like this, it is $46. There is a very faint, sweet smell to this that doesn't linger. This is one of my favorite lipsticks. I picked this one up, I think in January, late December, January, and I have been reaching for it a lot. This is definitely one of those that to me feels like a balm. It's light, it's glossy, it feels good, it's super hydrating. Doesn't last terribly long. I'm getting about two and a half to three hours of wear out of this. And it does transfer to utensils, to cups. It, come on, most of these do because they are cream lipsticks. But this one feels so good. This one really feels lightweight, balmy, 
super hydrating. This, by the way, is a shade 716 Canage. I, I love, love this shade. I like the fact that it has a little bit of warmth, but a little touch of brown as well. This is just stunning. I do have another one. Um, I actually have more than this one, but this is another one that I like to wear in the summertime. This one's called Lucky. It's kind of like a hot coral. I really like these lipsticks. First of all, they have a really nice slide and glide to them. They don't feel oily or greasy, but they have a nice emollient slip to them and they feel really plush on the lips. Beyond that, I get about three hours of wear out of them. And I feel like that wear, um, like after about two and a half to three hours, I'm reapplying because all of the moisture has kind of gone into my lips. I'll still have color, but I like touching this up just so that I continue to have that nice, comfortable, kind of um, hydrated feel on the lips. It applies really easily over the top of itself. I don't get that weird ring of color on the outside, nothing in the middle. It kind of wears evenly off all over the lips in my experience, and I like that. I need that from a lipstick. The minute a lipstick only gives me like the outer ring and everything in the middle is gone, oh, that's a no-go for me. And there are some that do that, this one does not. One other thing that I like, there are so many shades. There are 48 shades of this lipstick. Like, if you want a shade, you can find it. They've got plums, they've got browns, they've got reds, they've got nudes and peaches. Like, they've got it all bolds and neutrals. Come on, when you have almost 50 shades in this lip formula, that's pretty great. Number 10 is a little beauty from Chanel. This is the Rouge Coco lipstick, and these are $48 a piece. This one here is the shade Mademoiselle. I like this one, but if you're smelling it, it smells like you stuck your nose in a rose. It smells like a rose fragrance. And what's interesting is that not all Chanel lipsticks are scented. I don't understand that choice. So some are and some aren't, but I really like this formula. This lipstick shades in Mademoiselle is one of the easiest for me to reach for. It kind of goes with everything. It's a little bit cool leaning, but it's not too cool. This packaging, although it is nice, it is weighty. Um, it, is, it is not, the same experience as a lot of other luxury brands because it's not refillable, it's not magnetic, it just has that snap closure to it, which is fine. But I feel like once we get to a certain point, um, a lot of brands are really upping the ante when it comes to packaging. And I would not be surprised if Chanel decided to maybe reformulate. And this comes out in kind of more elegant packaging and maybe just a little bit of a tweak in the formula, but basically the same. You see what I'm saying? I would not be surprised. If you're curious, there are 19 shades. Super hydrating. Feels amazing on the lips. This is another one of those that I kind of treat like a balm. I throw it on, especially in this shade, I don't always use a mirror. This is super easy to just kind of, you know, add another layer when you need it. Super, super comfy. This is the one that I leave in my purse or I take in my pocket or sometimes stick in my bra if I don't have a pocket. Like this is the lipstick that since I purchased it, I have used it way more than I thought I was going to. First of all, because the shade works so well, but also because the formula is so good. This lasts about three or four hours on the mouth. Um, does well with beverages and snacks, but doesn't last through a full meal. It's pretty much gone by the end of a meal. But since it's really easy to reapply, it's like super easy for me to, at the table even, and we'll be having dinner here at the house, and I'll just pull it out, slap it on, and not even worry about it. Like that's how easy this formula is to apply. Last one for today is a recently reformulated lipstick from YSL. This is the Rouge Pure Couture. These are $48. And this packaging is also very similar to their bold formula packaging, but the bolds have the black on the top and the gold on the bottom, and the Pure Couture are a little bit different. If you have a bunch of YSL lipsticks in your collection, you'd be able to tell which is which. Um, this one here, this is the only one in this formula that I have. I think they reformulated these this last fall, uh, fall of 2023, and I really wanted to try them. So I picked this one up. This one here is in the shade N8. This Rouge Pur Couture feels a little bit different in my memory. Um, the older ones came in that total gold package and um, they were square, but they had like a little YSL emblem right here on the front. Um, those also were not magnetic or um, refillable. So I think it was kind of maybe a missed opportunity because these got reformulated in 2023. And to not go 
um, refillable or to update the packaging to magnetic, I feel it was maybe a lost opportunity. And at $48, you're paying, by the time tax comes in, it's more than 50 bucks for this. Is it heavy? Yes. Is it luxe? Yes. Is it beautiful? Yes. But I feel like for almost $50, I'm, I might want a little bit more. Just, just a little bit more when it comes to the packaging. That light floral scent, it's not the end of the world. Not to me, but it is slightly scented. But the feel of this on the lips, this feels very different because the previous iteration of this lipstick, in my memory, was just a hair heavier. Now I only had reds in that previous version and I feel like there were maybe more than 16 shades. And in the 16 shades that they have, although they look really nice, I feel like I already have those shades in my collection. So although I like this lipstick and it's really creamy and it wears well, lasts for about three to four hours on the mouth, um, doesn't last through a whole meal, but she's super easy to reapply. And another one of those, and it could be the shade that I have, but I don't feel like I need a mirror to reapply this. This is another one of those that I keep in my pocket, um, that I carry with me in my purse. Super, super easy, very comfortable, very nourishing, and it's, I mean, it, it really feels almost like nothing on the lips. So the other 15 shades in this lineup, I feel like, although they're really pretty shades, um, there's some lovely nudes, um, there's some lovely pinks and reds. I just feel like all the other options in this formula are colors that I already have. And I don't know that I have to run out and get another one of these. There, there might be one other kind of nude shade that's a little bit less intense than this that may, maybe, just maybe, but I need more lipstick, like I need another hole in my head. But I like this lipstick and this formula is so, so comfortable. It has almost like a slippy feel to it, but what's interesting is that although it does have that slippy feel, I don't find this kind of going everywhere. This is one that I don't wear with a lip liner. And it could be that it's not a bold shade. If I were to have this in a bold, maybe I would need a lip liner with it. But since it's not like a hot pink or a bright red or like a, you know, hot orange, I feel like I can wear this lipstick super easy without a lip liner, nourishing, and it, it just wears really well. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions about the lipsticks or anything that I might have missed in the comment section down below. Also check the description box because that is where I will have the playlist for my luxury lipstick series and the previous video. Um, I did a whole video of like ranking them worst to first for the mats and it was like almost an hour long. I didn't wanna do it. This time I decided to break it up into categories, you know, like the bottom end, these are the mid ones, the next eight, mwah, creme de la creme. I think they're just the best. But I'm not saying that these are bad lipsticks because I really do love them. I mean, these guys here, I wear these guys all the time, all the time, all the time. I, I like all of the lipsticks that I have here in front of me and I would without hesitation recommend them to you. But I think a lot of it falls down to what's your criteria? What are you looking for? Is it a shade you're comfortable wearing? You know, what are your needs? And our needs might be different. And you might, you know, rate lipsticks a little bit different than me based on how you wear them or what you're looking for in a lipstick. Um, thank you again for watching. I will see you again on Wednesday with those top eight lips. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you again soon.